The moment that no one has been waiting for is here. The Strangers is back in action, baby. Chapter one this time. That's right, there was a movie that came out in 2008. That's not enough. We need more mediocre movies in the Strangers universe. And we have it with The Strangers Chapter 1. I already reviewed the film. Spoiler! Hated it. And speaking of spoilers, that's the name of the game this time. I'm going to be going through this movie from front to back as much as I can remember. And basically just complaining. Let's begin! <laughs> Before I grossly lick my thumb and turn the page to the first chapter of this new Stranger Saga, I really don't like when people do that, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Adam does movies, that's me, I'm Adam, I do movies here every week, so I would appreciate it if you threw a, a like, a comment, anything my way, it's, it's all free of charge on your part, and uh, then we'll get on our merry way, so do that now. Should be enough time. Okay, let's begin. On the third day of a cross-country adventure, our two dumbass leads are going through the heart of Venus, Oregon. With five years under their belt, it's only a matter of time before Jeff pops the question. And I got a sneaky feeling he's gonna do exactly that before this movie winds down. Sure hope it doesn't come at the cost of his life. Let's continue. The film wastes no time at all, showing us that these leads are really unlikable idiots as they make out in the car, not noticing they're driving into oncoming traffic. They almost die three minutes into this film. And wouldn't the audience have been better for it? I would have been so grateful if the sweet release of death would have come my way right then, right there. But alas, we have to continue. We have to trek on. And sally forth we shall, right into the heart of Venus, Oregon. There's a small little set of shops. You have a mechanic, you got a diner. That's about it. I think there's a church up yonder, but that's that's pretty much the town. Everyone's out to greet these two. They get out of the vehicle, and already every single movie trope you see in a horror film is on display. We got the two creepy pale-ass white kids who look like they just came out of the cornfields. They have Bibles or pamphlets to hand to these two, they like go with God, and then they, do, they don't smile, they don't act like normal children. Two mechanics off yonder just sinisterly look at these two like they're easy targets because they're easy targets. The two city folk are a long ways from New York, I'll tell you what. They head into the diner where they see a whole rogues gallery of characters. You have the sinister looking cops. You have the couple over at the bar sharing what looks like a milkshake, maybe human sacrifice, a blood ritual or something. I don't know, just normal stuff that the town does. And then their order is taken. He, uh, she's vegetarian, of course, everyone's gonna laugh at her, roll their eyes and, and see if she can have anything on the menu. And Jeff is just all in on the meat. He's a glutton for the shit. He's gonna, he wants the bacon that they're going to take off her salad, put it on his burger, throw extra meat on there, just everything he can shove in his mouth. He wants, Jeff really likes a lot of meat in his mouth. That's the takeaway I'm getting from this. I'd say eat up, young man. This is about to be your last meal, but that would be dishonest because Jeff's going to pound another burger later on. We get to be treated to not one, but two eating scenes of Jeff. They're the grossest scenes in the film. The guy can't keep anything in his mouth. Stuff's oozing down. It's hitting the plate, splatting. Some of it ricochets into Maya. Just, ah! Maybe not that far, but, but he's one bite away from the camera getting a nice money shot. They bid adieu to the townies, get into their Scooby-Doo wagon, and head out of Dodge. Except for they don't. Because the start button on his new vehicle isn't working. <laughs> what are the odds? What are the odds of his car breaking down right when he pulls up to the sketchiest looking establishment known to man? Uh, the odds are pretty good, actually. Especially when you had the mechanics over there eyeing him up the entire time. And Jeff's not dumb is what he would have you believe, even though he's the dumbest man I've ever seen in a movie. He knows that they're being swindled right now. He knows that something's happening. But Maya, trusting people because she lives in the city for some reason, believes that these are stand-up individuals. I have no words because Jeff didn't even hit that starter two times before the mechanic was rapping at his window aggressively. Kish, 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 kish. Jesus! <laughs> Uh, yeah? Dick? Shit, looks like you're having car troubles. Me and Skeeter can fix it right up, but we're gonna need it for the night. Isn't that right, Skeeter? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Huh, well, what am I supposed to do? Even though I have modern technology, I could call an Uber, I could call a tow truck, I could find another place to stay. But no, you know what? Let's stay here. Let's trust this guy. It's the middle of the day still. There's plenty of opportunity for us to get out of the situation. But you know what? I like the cut of this guy's cloth. I think he's wholesale good. I just said a few things that I don't even think make sense, but we're going to keep going. <laughs> wholesale good? What the fuck? They have been informed that, unfortunately, the hotel is closed for renovations. I imagine it was a five-star swanky joint, but no, they're not going to be able to stay there. Good news is, just a few miles up the road, there's a cabin in the middle of the woods. It's being used as an Airbnb. <laughs> what are the odds again? <sighs> These people are idiots. Jeff and Maya say, all right, we're going to do this. You guys order the parts. We'll have the car fixed in the morning. We'll come back. Perfect. The waitress at the diner has graciously offered to drop them off since it's on her way home. Even though she's not going to go home, she's going to stalk them in the woods. Maybe, maybe. We don't know. We don't see. They have masks on this whole film. So that's the fun part is we don't even get a reveal at the end of who the killers are. Those are my favorite kind of films. The ones that give you nothing but take from you everything. She uh, drops Shaggy and Scoob off at the cabin. They get in with no problem, probably because it's abandoned and not really an Airbnb. Although there is a number left for them on the fridge, uh, a fridge that doesn't work. So she's able to call that and ask for a repairman. Now let's pump the brakes here. Let's... I want to really play out this scenario for a second. It's dark when they get to this place, like pitch black. It's probably seven or eight o'clock. The fridge light's working, but apparently it's not cooling. All they have on them is a six pack of beer that Jeff's already two bottles deep into. They don't necessarily need a working fridge when they're leaving right away in the morning and they've been eating out for every meal. What do you have to put in there? That's the question. Well, Maya certainly seems to think it's a problem. So she calls the number, hoping to get a repair guy out in the middle of the fucking night, in the middle of the woods at a place they don't know, in a town full of weirdos. Let's ha let's invite more people here. Let's really shine a spotlight on the fact that we're two strangers living in a stranger's home. So come on over, come on in, and fix the fridge that we don't even need. I can't imagine this backfires in any way later. Let's keep going. Well, it doesn't take long for them to get a little hot and heavy. They are alone after all. They've been together for five years. They're ready to bang it out for the night. And I can't wait because this is going to be the first piece of juicy action. We end. they're interrupted. They're making out. They're having to make out sesh. Short for session. And there's a knock at the door. There's a rap at the door asking for a Jenny or a June or a, a Joffrey. I can't remember the name, but uh, some mousy voice is like, is, ja is Jade there? Is is, uh, is Patty there? And Jeff's getting a little annoyed. He's like, listen, bitch. There's no woman by that name here. Leave. Go away. He tries looking at her through the little peephole, but she's all like silhouetted. He can't see anything. And then comes back again and starts rapping at the door. And it gets really old fast. And these two are getting a little frustrated and a little nervous. Like, what's this chick's problem? And then he looks out the window and she's just standing out there. Down at the end of the road, just just standing there. It's kind of creepy. So yeah, now would be a good time for Jeff to abandon Maya and go into town. <laughs> the excuse they come up with is he needs his inhaler. He doesn't have it. He's getting a little short of breath, you know, because there's a psychopath outside bothering them and they're in the middle of nowhere in a cabin. This was a terrible idea. So instead of like toughening it out or maybe, I don't know, bringing Maya with him, he goes alone. And she's like, Jeff, how are you going to get there? It's miles away. He goes, oh, well, I saw a motorcycle parked out front. And I've ridden on one once or twice. So yeah, no, no big deal. I'll find the keys and I'll steal this motorcycle and go into town. I'll leave you. I'll leave you in the cabin alone where there has been a crazy woman pestering us several times tonight. We haven't even seen her leave yet. So yeah, hang tight. And she's like, okay, see you later. Oh, can you get some food too? I, I'm hungry. I'm, I'm really hungry again. Wh why? What? So he goes, yeah. He goes back into town, gets his inhaler out of his car. The mechanic's still there working at all hours of the night, apparently. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing, boy? He's like, just get my inhaler. It's all good. He's like, yeah, you're right. It's all good. It's a weird scene. Doesn't go anywhere. 
And then he heads back over to the diner where the whole crew's hanging out again. He orders outside. The cook and the waitress look pissed to see him. Like they don't want to make anything for this asshole, but they do. And I don't know how dumb Jeff is, but why would you eat anything prepared by these people? They look like they want to kill you. Because spoiler, they do. Just like I do at this point, Jeff. I want you dead now. Jeff gets his triple decker burger. Gets on the motorcycle with his inhaler, heads back home, where... <laughs> While Jeff's out on the town having the time of his life, back at the cabin, Maya's getting hunted down by psychos again. The girl's back at the door, but there's also people just wandering around inside. They're already inside the house. <laughs> And the best part is Maya's got the windows wide open. Just letting a breeze in. While she smokes, she's taking off the edge. I don't, I, I can't. I cannot understand how someone writes and directs this shit. And doesn't think for a second about how what normal people would do in a situation. If there is a stranger smacking on your door a bunch of times. Asking for some person that clearly doesn't live in the house. And then repeatedly does it several more times. Stands ominously at the end of the driveway. You fucking bunker down for the night. You find a weapon. You get in a corner. Or, I don't know, maybe call the cops? That's an idea. You got a phone. Maybe call the cops. Maybe call an Uber and get out of there. Like, this is such a terrible situation to be in. They don't know the place. They don't know the area. And they're just willfully stupid. After several more scares and Jeff's still not home, Maya thinks to herself, how could I possibly get any dumber? Oh, I know. I'll take a shower. She gets in the shower. There are like seven scenes in this movie where Maya or Jeff are doing something and they turn and then we get a shot of one of the three strangers in their dumb masks just standing there. And that's it. That, that's the scene every time she's shampooing her hair. The hand moves away person there and then they're gone they disappear and whenever this happens in a movie i always like to think about how this played out so this guy's standing in the doorway right she didn't hear him come up because the shower fine whatever she moves her head he's there she moves her head back and turns over and he's gone the only way this plays out is <laughs> is because he has like two seconds to do this and he's a big dude so the only way I could see him doing this is if he like quickly like fell to the ground and like rolled out of the, <laughs> rolled out of the frame. I was he's not running back through that door. There's no way he's getting out of there in time. But it's it's two seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. She turns. He's slow as fuck. I don't know. There's no scenario where this plays out right. I can't remember the order of things, but there are like 15 minutes where Maya's walking around with just a long tee on and no pants. While, like, the stocking's going on, while she's hearing the banging and things. like Just logically speaking, I think you'd probably throw some pants on. But I get it. Sexy woman in a horror movie trope. We gotta play with that, even though it makes no sense at all in this context. Okay, so she gets out of the shower. She gets dressed. Power goes out. Now she's freaking out. She's running around. She's using her light on her phone. And bam, she sees one of the strangers in the house. Got the mask on. It's chasing her. There's flashlights going around. And I fucking knew when this scene happened. I knew it with every fiber of my being. When she's hidden in the closet. Upstairs. In a little, uh, I don't know, linen closet. She's just quietly sitting there. And you can see the lights and the footsteps running around. And then it's silent. But then, uh-oh, boom, 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 boom. More steps coming up and the door flies open and she freaks out and I knew it was Jeff. Because who doesn't come back into a house after getting food, not say anything while the power's out and then sneak around quiet as a mouse, run up the stairs, fling open a random fucking door to scare the person inside. Who doesn't do that? I do that every time I come home, of course, especially when I rent an Airbnb in the middle of nowhere. Um, Maya is hysterical. Jeff, like all logical men, just doesn't believe her about anything. He's like, yeah, you're, you're seeing things. The mask you were talking about on the woman is just a painting on the wall. You're dumb. There's no one here. And then seconds later, they're having a feast. They're eating their food. She's all over everything. She's like, you're right, Jeff. I'm an idiot. What was I thinking? And then we get the grossest scene in the film where Jeff eats his burger. <laughs> 
ketchup is just oozing out of this thing. It's spewing off of his mouth. It's down on his cheeks like he's a newborn baby having cake for the first time. And everyone thinks it's cute and they're taking photos. Like, oh, look at little Tiffany with her cake. And she's got all over her face. It was never cute. All right, Tiffany sucks. Learn how to eat. And Jeff certainly sucks because he's a grown-ass man. He's like, oh, mm, mm. oh, God, this meat tastes so good in my mouth. Oh, do you have any more meat, Maya? No, you don't have meat, Maya. You don't have meat. Oh! The way they're filming this made me think that there was something in the burger. Like blood was going to come out of the burger or a hand, like a finger or something. But no, it was just from a, a pheasant or some sort of bird hanging upside down from the ceiling that the idiots never even bothered looking up at. They freak out. Rightfully so. And now it's become real. Now it's real because there's a dead bird in the house. So they're locking the door. Jeff sees the windows wide open. <laughs> the window's open uh, shuts the window and it doesn't take much longer axe goes through the door maya and jeff freak out they run to the back room and the strangers are here we're off to the races the rest of this movie's gonna be non-stop roller coaster ride to hell and back sack face killer stranger the big guy he's got the axe and he's smashing through this thing like he's auditioning for the shining here's dumbass while he's crashing through the door our two leads in there infinite wisdom they're in the room in a mad dash panic and they think you know what the most logical thing is just go down on our knees and sit underneath a fucking window that we could go out it's not until the guy's done smashing the door and peeking in and then leaving do they even bother looking and acknowledging the window which i think has some boards on it but it was filmed kind of dicey but either way you're you're telling me this guy's not going to try to go out the window, try to find something to smash it with, try to fight back against this guy? It was so stupid. Sack lunch leaves, and after several seconds, Jeff decides the ghost is clear. He starts poking his head through the door that smashed. Like, I'm just going to stick my head through here. Hope no one lobs it off with an axe. Just going to poke my head. Maya, it's good. Let's go, Maya. Maya, come on. You go first. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. They realize that their phones are no longer operational. They've been smashed up and the ketchup smiley face has been put on top. That's cute. That's fun. And so now they realize they need to get some weapons. And the first place they check, which of course is the most logical place, is the medicine cabinet in the bathroom where they find a knife. And what are they going to do with that knife? They're going to use it to pry open a vent and nothing else ever again. <laughs> That's what they're going to do with the knife. This is the part where our heroes are definitely going to get away now. They climb through the vent and under the house. It's brilliant. They're finally doing something smart. While they're doing this, two of the strangers are slow dancing upstairs. Na 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 ni na na na. Harry and Marv now crawling underneath of these two under the floorboards don't realize there are rusty nails pointing straight up for whatever reason I can't possibly understand how that got set up that way but whatever maybe Kevin McAllister laid some traps when they were gone Maya hand first into this thing <laughs> Instead of leaving the nail in, they're going to make things harder for themselves than they need to. Jeff's going to rip that bad boy out. And then he's going to rip off the thinnest piece of shirt he can find and wrap it around a couple times. Like, you're good, champ. You're good. Okay, they crawl through this and they make their way to freedom out on the porch. They can go anywhere at this point. Run into the woods. Run down the road. Just get away from this house. What are they going to do? Thinking fast and doing the most logical thing, they make a beeline straight for the shack right next to the house, not five feet away. Why? I can possibly tell you why. Why, 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 why would anybody do something so fucking stupid? Follow the road. Go into the tree line off of the road and just head back into town. Get away from this place. But no, we're gonna we're gonna head into the into the shack instead. This is my favorite part of the movie, one of many favorite parts I have. And Jeff sprains his leg getting there. He trips over a log. He's like, oh, shucks, shoots. Ooh, goo, owie, ouchie. Ow. I'm okay, though. I'm okay. Maya, here's what we're going to do. Here's the plan. I want you to sit down in the corner here, and I want you to keep an eye on the window. And I want you to keep an eye on the door, which is on the other side. So I want you to kind of just do this over and over again. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you and I'm going to go upstairs because my foot's fucked. So I'm going to be the one to do this. And I don't want you to come with me because... 
because logic. So he hobbles his ass up the stairs and Maya's like, hmm, Jeffy Pooh, Jeff. And Jeff goes, I found a shotgun. And right at that moment, the mask lady smashes through the window, starts pulling at Maya. And Jeff goes, Ugh! and they get away. The strangers leave them again to their own devices, presumably because they think, okay, this jackass is a shotgun. He's bound to kill both of them with it. He does instantly put the shotgun down and hug Maya with his back to both the door and the window and the shotgun on the ground behind him. I can't even, this was the point I wanted to get up and leave this movie. It was so stupid. I just, I was frustrated watching every part of it, but here we are. With the shotgun in hand, the hunted become the hunters. They creep around the house and surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> blow one of the bad guy's heads off. At least that's what they thought. It turns out the call Maya made earlier to get a repair guy out did not fall on deaf ears. They sent someone out immediately and he came out there and Jeff shot his fucking head off. Now, I had questions. One, who's making calls at this hour of the night? Two, who picked up that phone to begin with? Three, what does this guy have to do with anything? Four, how did they not hear his car coming? Five, how did they not see the lights of the car coming down the road? Six, how did they not hear him coming or see the lights down the road? I, they're in the woods in pitch darkness. You can hear a pin drop seven miles down in the forest. They would have heard or seen this vehicle. This wasn't some modern, stealthy, newfangled vehicle he had. It was an old school mechanics truck. Bottom line is Jeff's a killer. He killed an innocent man. Maya doesn't take too much time to dwell. She's like, fuck it, we got a car, let's bolt. First logical thing any of these two idiots have said so far. They get in the vehicle, they start to take off, they get maybe five feet before a truck smashes into them, pinning them into the tree. Jeff is now stuck between a tree, a truck, and a hard place. He tells Maya to bail. Maya's like, I can't leave you. He's like, go. She's like, yeah, okay. And she leaves. He, he has the gun for some reason. He doesn't give her the gun. And just in case you're not keeping count, this is now the third time that Jeff has abandoned Maya. I mean, granted, he told her to leave this time because it was a worse situation. But still, he has actively gotten rid of her somehow three times. The strangers are not done messing with this couple yet, though. Jeff is able to get away from the vehicle. He still has his gun, and now he's traipsing through the woods looking for his girl. Instead of, um, instead of getting into the truck that the stranger abandoned that's running. It, it, the keys are in the ignition. The fucking truck is running. It's a big truck. He could get in. He could drive down the road. He could start honking his horn for Maya. Or, I don't know, dude, there's more fish in the sea. You didn't engage to her yet. Maybe just go. Maybe just head into town or a trustworthy town. Find some law enforcement that can help you. There were a lot of choices here that would have played out a lot better than what he chose to do, which is scramble around in the dead of night looking for her with a busted up ankle. Meanwhile, Maya, who has nothing but room to run, decides now's a good time to hide. I'm 10 feet from the cabin. I should just go down into this bramble and cover myself up, even though it's so obvious. It's a bold strategy, Cod, and let's see if it plays out for her. It does not. She spotted, tried to escape. They knock her out, they drag her away. But don't worry, Jeff's on the case. And he finds the female mask wearing stranger in the woods, puts a gun right to her face and says, just give me one reason. Just, what? Just give you one reason to what? Shoot her? Bitch, she gave you 50 reasons to shoot her. This whole movie's been a reason to shoot her. Are you serious? If she's not going to tell you where Maya is, which clearly she's not since she did a hysterical joker laugh. <laughs> and then she put the fucking shotgun right to her face. Pull it! He even has the gall to utter. They say the first kill's the hardest. Well, this is my second. Still doesn't shoot. Instead, the giant Tess, the large sack guy, sack lunch, he comes traipsing over and knocks Jeff out. How is this guy so stealthy? You would hear the dew drop hit a leaf from eight miles back in the middle of the woods. There's no sound. How is he sneaking up on these idiots all the time? The movie mercifully winds down at only an hour and a half, thankfully, with our two lovebirds strapped to chairs. And we have the three amigos looking at them. They're going to have quite a wedding story to tell because this is the moment where Jeff thinks, now's the time. 
Now's the time to pop the big question. And he asks, Maya, marry me? It's not really a question. It was more of a statement. But then she's like, what? He goes, will you marry me? Yes, a thousand times. Yes, of course I'll marry you. Cool beans. We're going to get that farm you always wanted with the white picket fence and the puppies. We're going to get that garden where you can grow your own spices, your own herbs. You're going to be able to have fresh radish, fresh tomato, fresh... Knife goes into the stomach at that moment. Oh! That hurts. Ow, 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 ow. Pulls it out. Kicks the chair. He bleeds out and dies. Well, hopefully Maya has a better... Knife goes into Maya's stomach too. You bastards. I hate you. Just give me one reason. Just give me one reason. And then they kick her chair over. And then they hear the cops because at some point Maya called the cops when she was in the bramble. I forgot. She put, she picked up her phone. She's like, hey, help me, help me. I'm, I'm trouble. Ah, uh, I knew you were trouble when you walked in. Shame on me. Cause I know. Sorry. I, I've been listening to a lot of Swift lately. Uh, yeah, just come get us or we're going to die. Yeah. Okay. I love you too. Bye. The cops come. They spook the strangers who bust out a dodge, leaving Maya to her own accord. She's on the ground, presumably dead, but I had a feeling she wasn't. The camera does a slow push up to her face, and I thought for sure we were going to end this movie with her eyes opening. Boom. End it. Cool. She's going to live for chapter two. But instead, for some reason... (laughs) They take it one scene further for no real effect. We push in, the eyes don't open, but then we immediately jump to her in a hospital bed alive. That didn't have more of an aha moment because it happened so suddenly. Just have her open her eyes and be done with it. It was so stupid. This movie sucked. Top to bottom, bad. And now you don't have to see it because I just relived it for you. Unless you already did see it, in which case uh, I apologize. Uh, But we got to relive it again together. Hopefully I was able to do it the injustice it deserved. I'm sure I missed a couple things like playing the piano. There's a part where she plays the piano beautifully, mind you. All right, let me know your thoughts on this movie. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie reviews, roasts, rants, everything movie related every single week on the channel. Would love to have more eyes and ears on it. And if you really appreciate the hard work I put in, you could leave me a super chat right on this video. Just five or 10 bucks, say great job, Adam. Or become a Patreon or YouTube join member. Tons of perks, tons of fun. Hopefully I see you next time. Take care.